graphic novel? It is. A new Choose Chicago docuseries is taking you on a journey through the diverse and complicated tapestry of Chicago's neighborhoods. The 77, A City of Neighborhoods is a travel show that spotlights five local communities like never before. Rob Foytig, Jose E. Lopez, and Cecilia Cuff join us with more. Thank you all so much for being here. Thanks for having us. So Rob, you're with Choose Chicago. You kind of spearheaded this whole thing. If nobody knows, 77, we have 77 neighborhoods in Chicago. What made you decide that we needed to really kind of delve into those and show people what's inside those neighborhoods? Well, we do so much at Choose Chicago to promote our neighborhoods. We always work with a local partner, a chamber of commerce or a community development corporation to really get the authentic perspective on the community. We see a trend across tourism where folks want those unique one of a kind only in Chicago experiences, right? Um, and so this is an effort to tell those more complicated stories. Mm -hmm. And Cecilia, you are the co-founder of Bronzeville Winery. Talk about how important your establishment is to the community. Yeah, I think that the small businesses in our communities, we are the pillars of the community and we make up those fabrics that make every single niche uh, and every single corner and neighborhood um, such an exciting adventure. And so, you know, you have Brownsville Winery, but you've also got Carver 47 doing incredible things right down the street and Norman's that's been there for years. So, you know, when we think about cities and the way that we get to tell our own stories, mm -hmm. each one of those small businesses in a community is really a, a space that tells its own story in a very unique narrative. And we're going to talk to Jose as well about Humboldt Park. But Cecilia, just give us a little heads up on Bronzeville. What are people missing out if they've never been there? Ooh, Bronzeville. <laughs> Say first, Bronzeville Winery. Stop by and grab a glass of wine. Obviously, yeah. Uh, <laughs> one of our wine flights and then some incredible items on our menu. Um, but, you know, in general, when you walk up and down the streets of 44th and Cottage Grove, right where Bronzeville Winery, you can get a facial at CBQ Beauty Bar or catch a mm. yoga class over at Haji Healing Salon and Spa or buy some art uh, at Fortune House or Sarah Kafufi Shop right next door to us so it's an incredible incredible corridor with such again everybody's got a different story to tell love that and uh, speaking of you've got a story to tell about humboldt park jose my goodness you are the uh, executive director of the puerto rican cultural center tell us what makes your neighborhood so special what makes it so special are these two huge flags which we placed mm -hmm. there almost mm -hmm. 30 years ago uh, it really is a corridor of economic and cultural expression obviously very Puerto Rican center, uh, but also a place that people can come to visit and get to know who we are as a particular group of people and enjoy our food, enjoy our um, everything that we have to offer. We have an, an incredible museum. We have amazing um, places to eat and drink, but we also have anchor within that area a small business incubator um, that basically has already established about three Puerto Rican women-owned businesses there, oh, wow. a brick and mortars. And on April 20th, we would be opening up four more businesses in that strip. So it's really amazing place to go visit, enjoy, but also immerse yourself totally in Puerto Rican culture and history. Mm -hmm. And is that kind of the role of your organization as well, really bringing that feeling out in these businesses? The Puerto Rican culture has been in existence for over 50 years. We, our role is, has been primarily to community, based on community building, but we also have a very um, effective way of dealing with small businesses. We were able, um, during COVID, between the two flags, there are 50 businesses. All of them survive, and we're wow. very, very happy mm -hmm. with what we were able to do because our work is very organically driven, but yet holistic in approach mm -hmm. as well. And Cecilia, I feel like you've paved the way to kind of show other entrepreneurs that Bronzeville is a community that you do want to build a business in. I mean. How does it make you feel to know that you've inspired other business owners? It's, it's funny because it actually dates predates me being born. Yeah. When you go back and you look at the space that Bronzeville was of the black metropolis and the immense migration that it caused, you know, of the brilliant business owners and creatives and musicians that were coming out of that community, it feels like we're only following in their footsteps. So, you know, I, it's been really easy for us. We're inspired by those stories that already exist in our communities. And there are spaces like uh, Boxville that's been open for years mm -hmm. that really helped us in Bronzeville to look at the way that we use our communities um, as a, a space for commerce and, and also set the stage that makes it, makes it 
possible for us to not leave our own communities to get everything that you need right there. Yeah, and Box feels like a small business incubator using like cargo containers, which is very cool. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We obviously are just scratching the surface of this uh -huh. docu-series, just talking about two of the awesome neighborhoods. But you guys really cover it. What's the coolest thing you learned? Oh man, what is the coolest thing I learned? So um, I think one of the neatest things I learned, um, there's a place in Little Village called Ocito's Tap. Oh, yeah. Um, and so it is. Uh, it was a long-time family um, liquor store. Yeah, Moreno's from Moreno's Liquors. Liquors. Exactly. We featured them on the okay, show. Okay, yeah, good. Yeah. So you know it. Um, and so it's got like the largest agave mm -hmm. spirit collection in North America. Um, but the bar there actually, it was, a, it was a speakeasy. It was an Al Capone run speakeasy. And mm -hmm. so they've redone it. It's really cool. Um, it's always exciting, I think, when those little bits of history come through, mm -hmm. um, right? You're sitting there enjoying this beautiful space, a cool menu. Um, and then you learn that it's actually been there for like 100 plus years. Crazy. Well, I'm very excited to hear that you've done one on Uptown. That's my neighborhood. So uh, <laughs> that's where I am right now. I've lived in a lot of them, but uh, very excited to see them cool. all. And where can people see them? So people can catch these all on our website, choosechicago.com. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Jose Cecilia. Thank you so much for being with us. For more information on the new docu-series, just head to choosechicago.com forward slash the 77, just as you heard Rob say. And uh, you can also find them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Choose Chicago. Thank you all for being with us. Thanks so much thank for having you. us. Thank you.